around the valley <laughs> who are speaking on subjects of interest in Desert Hot Springs and the Coachella Valley. But tonight we have one of our own, Jeff Bowman, owner and operator, along with his wife Judy of Living Water Spa in the old days known as the Kismet Lodge. But Jeff does a lot more than run, operate a popular spa in Desert Hot Springs. He ran for Mission Springs Water District Board of Directors in 2009 and won, and still on the board. He served as the Public Safety Commissioner uh, for 11 years. He was also a commissioner on the Palm Springs Airport Commission representing Desert Hot Springs for four years. He was six years on the Hospitality, Industry, and Business Communities Convention and Visitors Authority. Could they have a longer name? <laughs> he helped the Desert Hot Springs Historical Society when we were just getting organized, and he served as webmaster and agreed to serve as sort of an interim president and run the meetings but that stretched out to seven years. <laughs> in 2006, Jeff and Judy were named the Desert Hot Springs Chamber of Commerce Business Persons of the Year. Currently, Jeff is president of the Hoteliers Association, and Judy, I think I'm right, you were president last year? Jeff. He's a California native. He grew up in Southgate, but has lived in four other states as well. He holds a master's degree in theology from Fuller Theological Seminary. He served 17 years as a senior pastor in four non-denominational community churches. He spent 15 years in the computer field at Toshiba America Computer Systems. He's certified in the state of California to teach business administration, sales, marketing, <laughs> ethics, and massage therapy. <laughs> Living Water Spa, a European style clothing optional spa created by Jeff and Judy in 2003, has received reviews in the New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times, and USA Today, along with many others. Currently, it is called one of the top ten clothing optional resorts in the world, according to TripAdvisor. So, with that background information, I give you Jeff Bowen with the inside story of Desert Hot Springs Spa. Thank you so much, and uh, I'm stand up for a second. I'm honored to have my fellow, some of my fellow hoteliers here. Welcome to Two Bunch and to Desert Hot Springs. Hopefully uh, we'll help round out some of the information you've already received about our wonderful city. We have the, an amazing city. We have a great uh, community spirit within our town, and I'm honored to be part of it. As it turns out, 14 years ago we moved here, and uh, well, one thing led to another, and here we are today, still. Amen. Yay. Thanks. <laughs> so, the inside story. What is this all about? But before I get too far involved in things, uh, I want to dedicate my presentation uh, to Jack Webb. And we all know Grandpa Jack is his grandson and, and uh, granddaughter-in-law. I guess that would be a good word. Um, how special he was to them, and how special over the years he was to our town. World War II veteran, college graduate, teacher, poultry business owner, restaurant business owner, hotel spa. He owned the spa that I bought. And so I have a great kinship with that. Uh, he was a real estate broker, a Rotarian for 40 years, Director for the Mission Springs Water District Board of Directors. Again, I feel like I'm following in Jack's shoes. And 
man, a philanthropist, and lastly, and more importantly, a wonderful human being. And I think we all can agree that um, his grandson Ivan is following in his footsteps. You know, I used to own the Kismet Lodge, and I go, really? And he goes, yeah, so this postcard, you notice the palm trees here, how tall they are, and I have some other uh, postcards later on I'm going to show you, but in the back of it, your host, Barbara and Jack Webb, and I like their description. Our own hot mineral, hot, our own natural hot mineral water well, enclosed hydrojet therapy pool, heated outdoor pool, sauna room, shuffle board, which I did remove that. <laughs> Horseshoes, I don't know where. <laughs> Color TV, electric kitchens, gas barbecue, air conditioning, the friendly place to stay in Mr. Hot Springs. And they owned the Kismet Lodge in the 70s, to best of my knowledge. Here's Jack and Barbara. I asked Ivan for some pictures that uh, could illustrate them from when they owned the Kismet. You can see the rooms behind. Uh, they had a wedding there. Here's the Kismet sign that uh, still glows to this very day. I had it restored when we bought the place back in 04. And um, this is what it looked like back then. And now these palm trees, you know, what are here? What are they? About 15 feet? They're double that now. They're about 35 feet. <laughs> anyway, we lost a good one. And we should all be like Jack. A spa. We're going to talk about those tonight. Uh, the word comes from the city of Belgium as the famed site of the healing hot springs. Spa Belgium has been frequented as a watering place since as early as the 14th century. Its name has become used as a place or any place mineral water is found and used in physical therapy. There's also another possibility, albeit probably not as close, but I kind of like it, so I'm throwing it up there anyway. And Salud per Aqua, or SPA, translated health through water. Now tonight, I'm going to use the word spa and hotel interchangeably in this presentation. Also, as I'm going to share with you some top secret insider information. So do you promise not to tell? We don't say yes. yes. exist because of love, passion, and grit. And that is from the very beginning until today. I've identified five phases of history regarding our spots. From the 1900s to, uh, to 32, the discovery of water, both cold and hot. From 32 to 48, the founding of Desert Hot Springs. From 49 to 70, uh, California's spa city develops. From 71 to 96, the spas matured, and from 97 to present, the, the spas revived. We can start with phase one, and I realize that for a lot of you who have uh, been in town for a long time, this part, uh, don't fall asleep, uh, but you probably already know it. Water in the desert equals life in the desert, and we had some homesteaders. The very first one that we are aware of is a, a gal by the name of Hilda Gray, who uh, homesteaded near what is currently now Too Much Palms. In uh, 1913, Cabot Yurtza walked. He came out here to homestead. He walked to Garnet to get water, and there, that's Cabot with Merry Christmas, and I think that's Hilda Gray's borough as well. This was his first eagle's nest over on the Miracle Hill area, and actually he was the one who named it. He dug for water to hit both the hot and cold aquifers, and uh, he named it Miracle Hill because they didn't understand the earthquake faults that create the water and the aquifers here in the valley. And here's a picture of that. We have uh, the hot water aquifer is called the Desert Hot Springs Aquifer, and the this earthquake fault, the Mission Creek Fault, is one of the, it's the northernmost branch of the San Andreas that splits into three uh, faults down by the Salton Sea. And if you're on this side, you have hot water. If you're over here, you have cold water. It's very interesting uh, in this 
is a definite demarcation. Now here's a little bit of insider information you may not have heard. Back in 58, the spa owners created this particular group called the DHS Spa Tell Organization. Now you say, why would they do that? Well, it's because they wanted to differentiate between the spas pumping from the hot water aquifer and those that do not. Do I hear a gas? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and back in the day, and I can tell you, uh, I'm kind of proud that we have our own, our own uh, private hot water well. Water comes out of my well at 105 degrees, and we pump 18 hours a day, 20 gallons a minute. That's a lot of water, and it costs a lot of money. There are spas that are on the other side of the aquifer that have, uh, they may have warm water, maybe 90 degrees, but it's not hot water. And there was a whole discussion and debate about this. And I don't frankly care personally, but I'm, I'm proud that we actually have a hot water well. So we know the story that in 1918, Cabot went to the Army. He left the Army in 19. He settled down in Fertula, California. He operated a grocery store, was postmaster. In 25, he returned to Europe to travel and study art for one year. And if you go to the museum, you can see the wonderful pieces of art that he has uh, had drawn. Uh, quite a talented guy. On his return to the States, he settled in Moore Park. He operated a grocery store until he finally returned to the desert in 37. Now we get to phase two, the founding of the town. And when you've got water, you can build a city. So in 32, a developer from downtown Los Angeles, L.W. Coffey, who is 56 years old, I want you to hang on to the ages and I'm going to be sharing with you, because I'm going to make a point in a few moments. <laughs> he happens to meet Cabot Yerksa, who at the time had left the desert and had a grocery store in Moor Park. Cabot learns of the hot water in the area and decides that this would be a great place to home, uh, where Cabot had homesteaded, and it would be a great place to build a town focused on health. So, Cabot introduces Coffee to L.G. Anderson, whom Coffee comes to the desert to meet. And in 1932, for the next three or four weeks, Anderson becomes helpful to Cabot in visioning with coffee, I should say, over the future of this part of, of the desert. Now, what's interesting, coffee returns to L.A. to set up a trust because most of the land out here is owned by the homesteaders. So they had to go through a lot of legal uh, uh, concerns in order to get these things going to set up a town. And in 33, Coffey drills for water. He leases a small drilling rig and hires Earl Howard. And the drilling proceeded from early May to late June, and the water in the well had a temperature of 140 degrees. At that point, Coffey sold 14 one-acre lots. Now in 33, Coffey at age 57 built his original bathhouse. Now this is not to be confused with his first spa. The bathhouse, I have not found any pictures of, but it, it was a very crude and small place. He actually says in his little pamphlet, YDHS, we then installed the electric light plant, operated, an old, operated with an old student acre engine, which supplied light for the bathhouse and the adobe. This plant furnished us about 12 lights, which was hardly enough, and then coffee adds a butane gas range and began serving meals. He applied for a beer and wine license, which according to him was not hard to get at that time. <laughs> now the weekend crowds often sleep in their cars, because at this point there were no rooms. So he starts to build his spa now, a real building building. Foundation is laid, he is 65 years old in 1941. He opened for business in July of 41, and don't forget, this is during the war, and this was when uh, materials were hard to come by, and the whole nation was preoccupied with World War II. At age 71, a fire destroyed the first coffins. Now, I don't know about you, but we have this pain of all the fires and all the huge loss that our town being founded on water had its first spa go up. <laughs> Horrible. And coffee was 71. 
You're going to retire, LW. He says, no way. I'm going to rebuild it bigger and better at age 72. And then, and then finally, 34 years after he, he passes away, it was torn down. And I have a little short clip uh, that I'm not sharing with this, but just letting you know, bulldozers took days because the second coffee was made out of concrete and block mm -hmm. instead of wood. Now, let me give you some insider information. Coffee demonstrated the grit needed to run a mineral water spa, or for that matter, any little business. The same grit is required today or you won't make it. So those of you who are in the spa business, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. If you're, yeah, amen. And if you like to, to own a spa, you could do that. Here's Coffee's first spa, 1941. It was a wood structure. This is the one that caught fire. Isn't that beautiful? It's fantastic. Great, great angle here. And what I want you to notice as I go through some of these pictures, what's around the other building, the buildings rather? Nothing. Okay. So his spa burns up, and he rebuilds. This is the one that lasted until '91. There's a wonderful aerial shot of that. This is Eighth and Palm. Here's Palm. Here's Eighth and wow. nothing around it. Another angle that I was able to get off of a publication. And then there must be wintertime, huh? Because San Jacinto is full of snow. And look behind it. Not a whole lot. And some pictures of the inside. It was very clinical uh, in the 1952 era. Now we come to the next phase. As a, as, I'm sorry, the next aspect of it, the spa city develops. L.W. Coffee runs this advertisement. For as low as $29.50 per month after small down payment, you can get a motel lot and build your own spa. And so, Coffee started marketing things, and at one time, there were over 120 facilities built in Desert Hot Springs and the city incorporated in 63. Here's a list of all the spas that I've been able to identify or lodging facilities that have been in this town. <coughs> and we wonder why it was called Spa City. No need to wonder now. By the way, the last one was where Furby when he owned the woods. So now, each of these new spas that were created have their own character, their own personality, their charm, and the majority of them had a hot water well with very intense. What does our water consist of? It's a good point to bring in right here. You can see this listing. Two things I've highlighted for you that I think are significant by today's standards. Lithium, there's a little trace of lithium in our water, and the pH is higher than normal. It's 8.3, sometimes about as high as 8.5. We'll come back to these in a minute. So here's some of the spas that were built in that, uh, that phase of development. Blue Water Manor on 8th Street. Cactus Lambda Lodge Spatel on Calle Azteca. Cactus Spring Lodge. Notice the background. I'll be talking about what's coming up. Some of these are new, have been revived, and I'm going to get to that. Thanks, honey. But notice the background. Not nothing there. The Caravan Motel on 4th Street. Again, look at nothing there. Classic cars, too. Wouldn't you like to have that guy right there? Nothing in the background. And this is over on 4th. David's Bomb, Palm Drive. That one is still there. But you can see behind things, not a whole lot going on. The Mahaya Lodge on Calle Las Tiendas. That's up in the east end of town where we're at. Again, look at the hills. Not a whole lot going on. Ah, the Kismet Lodge. Notice, remember those palm trees I showed you earlier with Jack Webb? Here they are, about six feet tall, 
And uh, as I said, now they're about 35 feet tall. Notice what's in the background. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, that was Photoshop back in the day. Because <laughs> we don't have grass over here. Um, and I believe this one here would be uh, what was El Mont uh, Monte Carlo, then it became uh, the Beat Hotel, then it became the Dog Spa, and now it's Desert Hot Springs Inn. Right here. Hmm. Rock's Lodge on 6th Street. These are all postcards from eBay. The Smile Inn on 6th Street. Look at those cool cars. The Moors on Raposo Way. We'll come back to the Moors. It became the spring. I'll show you a bit. The Pan Pan. This sets right above the Kismet on Calle Azteca. Again, look at nothing in the background. The Waldorf Health Resort on Mesquite. Now it's a uh, assisted living facility. And did you know that we had a branded hotel in this town? Wow. A Best Western. This is, was the Ponce de Leon. It's currently now the Hyundai. Uh, it's the one that has all the rocks in front of it today. But uh, this was the only that I could de determine branded hotel, uh, or as they call the industry, a flagged hotel. So now we come to the phase four of the Spa of the Tour, from 71 to 96. Now, during this time, many things happened. The over 120 lodging facilities started to decline. The spas that, that continued struggled. And, uh, by the way, as an aside, I've tried to figure out why, and I think it's because um, the value of mineral water declined. And, and many of the spas that were there couldn't last, and they were turned into small apartments. Even the original coffees was torn down in 91 during this period. And the current health and wellness emphasis just did not exist. And the city developed all around the spots. We have people show up at Living Waters and they say, you're in the middle of the neighborhood. And I go, well, we were here first. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not a bad thing for the houses to be around, but it's just how the city developed. So now, over on First Street, there was a place called Sukasa. What happened to it? Well, this is what it turned into. Just a, maybe, a small apartment complex. The Troy Winds on Sunset. Again, another picture of it. Those people are, you know, they're just relaxing in the mineral water. Now look at it. We have the Too Much Palms, the Valley Vista Motel. Have you ever seen it? You haven't, because it doesn't exist. <laughs> Burwood Lodge on Calle de Amapolo. Pretty place, you can see brand new because the palm trees look at nothing in the background. It became Sun Villa Spa. Look at that sign, Sun Villa Spa, Desert Hot Springs. What is it now? Well, it's apartments. Coachella Valley Apartments on 4th Street. Remember, that's up by where Cabot's would, or Coffee's would have been, so they would provide lodging for people that wanted to go to Coffee Spa. It isn't there either. Now, what's this insider information? As you drive around town, when you see an older, run-down apartment complex, more than likely, it was built as a spa back in the day, with its own well. For instance, the Pan Pan that's just north of Mayan right now is uh, Calle Azteca Apartments. They have a hot water well, but what does it run as? It's run as apartments. Hmm. Do you have the grit to revive a spa? <laughs> it can be done. It went for sale, the Pan Pan, or Calle Azteca Apartments, about five years ago, and it sold for only $300,000. Now you have probably about double that of deferred maintenance, but it has a well, and it has the water. So now we come to the final phase. From 97 to present, the spas revive. Thanks to the internet, 
and the growing awareness of health and wellness or revival was possible for the mineral water spot. Yet it still takes the love, passion, and grit like that of L.W. Coffee. And a little money too. <laughs> so here's the Highlander Lodge. Look at it. It's up on Club Circle back in the